Okay, we're almost done with this render. As you can see, it's been running for about six and a half minutes. It's almost done. It's got another 20 seconds, 24 seconds left. A little less than that. This is now with four steps of anti-aliasing, and I've left on all of the ray trace functions. So this is a pretty good render time. And we're just going to use the vector blur. And there you go. There's a, a rendered image there. 960 by 540 and uh, it looks pretty much like a regular shot from the show of course uh, we would be blowing this image to full resolution HD 1920 by 1080 and we're just gonna hit the abort button there on the render because it's done and I can take a look at this image with alpha and you can see that the motion blur is in there courtesy of the vector blur, blur plugin and I didn't really have to go through the process of rendering um, uh, all the different passes to do motion blur on top of it. Um, you can see though here on the edge that this ship that's flying off the corner of the screen, um, the way the motion blur works in camera and light wave is it knows where things are going forward and backwards in time. Um, with the vector blur plugin, and this is a really simple explanation, it doesn't really know how to deal with that close to the edge of frame. Uh, so it's going to leave a little bit of uh, an area there that isn't blurred properly because it doesn't really know what to do after the edge of the frame. But with LightWave's in-camera motion blur, it does. But this, in general, works for us right now. And it uh, saved a lot of time just on this little render. That's one of the great things about LightWave is that if you can get away with it, you more than likely can, and uh, it certainly helps. All right, we got our stars back there. Um, they're not as bright as I would like them. I'd probably go and maybe adjust it and maybe add a little bit more contrast in the compositing process. Uh, but for now, that's uh, basically what the shot looks like uh, with a little bit of motion blur on it. And uh, get the Galactica in the background there in the next video, and this whole shot will really start to come together. We'll also be going into the bro breakout process, uh, which is a method for us to render out the elements and have the lighting separated from each other, all the uh, engine glow on all the ships separated so we can punch stuff up, turn it down, and mix it together and really make it look uh, uh, like a final uh, shot that you would see on the show. Uh, that's it for this particular video. We'll continue on in the next one. I'm Kelly Lee Myers and thanks for watching. Make sure you sh check out Shuttle's uh, website. The URL is on the screen or uh, you can link to it from my site and a special thanks to them and also to Sparkle Computer for this graphics card that's in this machine. Again, it's a GTX 275 uh, with uh, just under 1800 megabytes of video RAM. It certainly comes in handy. And uh, the shuttle itself is an XPC with a Phenom 2 940 processor uh, with 8 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM and it's uh, chewing through this stuff very very nicely. Uh, three years ago we only had the dual core systems uh, around about 2.8 gigahertz. This one's a 3 gigahertz based uh, processor. Um, certainly it's a lot faster than what we would be dealing with uh, a few years ago. Uh, once again thank you very much and stay tuned for the next videos.